Hello my viewers, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mary Juliana. If it's your first time here, consider subscribing so that you get notified when I upload new videos. And uh, if you are my subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. Thank you so much for your support. So in today's episode, we're gonna cover the tips on how to save money while working in the Middle East. Things that you should avoid and things that you should do. Okay, first of all, uh, you see ladies, uh, most ladies that come in the Middle East countries, we come from humble background. That's why we cannot even be able to afford uh, money to pay for commission to get those high paying jobs. That's why we opt for Middle East to work as housemaids. Yes. So I know when you come here, most people maybe have looked down upon you in your country before you came here right most people may be abused and told you that you cannot make it in life like you will be poor forever and when you come here and start earning you want to prove them wrong huh? you want to show them that you can live big huh? you have already made it in life and that pressure makes you start uh, buying expensive stuff huh? and posting on social media to prove them wrong that you can live you can live large like you are earning money like you have already become rich forgetting that uh in the middle east you are just there for a season you cannot become a citizen of uh, middle east countries you're just there for a season like maybe two years or maybe if you will extend your contract you'll work for four years or maybe five years then you'll have to go back to your country all right and here you are coming here to look for uh money that will sustain you when you go back to your country so when you come here and you want to prove the people back at home that you are living large that you are abroad that you can afford to buy every stuff and you want to you want them to respect you and you will end up uh, coming out of middle east uh, as you left kenya for example if you are coming from kenya or if you are coming from from uganda you will go the same person you came you will not have changed anything or maybe if you will have changed it will be very little that maybe cannot put up, cannot put up something uh, useful so maybe you should uh, avoid that just uh, focus on your savings focus on your dreams don't try to prove anybody wrong don't try to prove them that don't try to show them that you can live large that you are working abroad okay the more you try to show them you have money the more you spend your money and the more you the more poorer you become and the more it's hard for you to save because now you want to buy that iphone and show them that you have bought iphone you have that big phone you have that uh, trending cloth that is on fashion you have that expensive shoes you want to show them and it's your pocket that is draining okay so that's number one number two there is this competition my friend has bought iPhone iPhone 13 Pro Max and I'm using uh, Samsung I want to upgrade I want to look like them I want to fit in their shoes I want to, to fit in their class I mean you want to be like your friends you want to have that iPhone your friends have braided their hair it costed maybe uh, five five thousand Kenyan shillings now you want to look like your friends okay you want to be in the same class that competition of class Maybe you forgot that maybe your friend uh, is uh, is not uh, is depending on their family. You know, you have people that depend on their family, and we have us that our family depend on us. We cannot uh, behave in the same manner. We cannot buy stuffs that uh, are on this of the same price because if you want to compete with your friends that are depending on their family, you are the one who will lose in the end uh, because your family now will suffer. Okay. So stop that competition. If you have to engage yourself in any competition, it should be about development. Like your friend has built a house. You should be thinking of what to do to build a house too. Or maybe your friend has started up a business. You should be thinking of how did, she, how the, how did your friend uh, start that business? What are the advantages? How can you go about it? Maybe if uh, your friend has an extra job or a part-time job, how is it? How did she get that job? How did he get that job? Okay, those are the type of competition that you should engage in. But those competition of buying stuff, my friend, your friend doesn't have the, the, the needs that you have. Maybe your friend doesn't even have kids. They're not paying school fees. And you're paying school fees and you want to live on the same level. You want to, when they wear this dress, you want to wear the same dress. 
you are the one who will end up losing another one is uh, saving your money in cash please there's nothing uh, bad as saving your money in cash you know you have been given that opportunity to come and work in the Middle East the easiest way to make that money safe is to put it in your account in Kenya where you cannot access it yes because you see when you have that cash there you are scrolling down your phone uh, you are you are here online huh? you, you are here online you are looking uh, on at the stuff uh, sold online right you are on uh, in online shopping you see something uh, it looks nice by the way you want to buy it and you have money so what will prevent you from buying it when you have the money but when you don't have that money like it's in your bank account you cannot access it you will not buy it you will not even go to that online shop or maybe you are going out with your boss or alone maybe if you are a man you are going to the mall and you will see uh, things that uh, are looking nice you will want to buy them and nothing will stop you because you have the cash but if that money is uh, kept in your bank account back in Kenya or in Uganda wherever you are watching from it is very safe okay and you cannot access that money so it will give you financial discipline but if you have that money in cash my friend will buy that stuff that you are admiring you will buy everything you meet something nice you want to buy it you meet something is looking good you want to buy it you'll purchase it but if that money is in your bank account where you cannot access it it's very safe it will give you that discipline you will uh, stop uh, some you know that last that last will not be there because you know that even if you last for it you don't have cash so you cannot purchase it another thing uh, if you are outside you are not working on contract you are not a lady who is working on contract you know as if we want to travel we go uh, we travel by our boss's vehicles we don't go anywhere so we don't spend any money on transport but those ones who are working out there maybe the men and the ladies who are working out there not on the contract you know you want to travel avoid taxi use the bus or train train is cheaper and bus is cheaper but taxi it's very expensive you find that a place that uh, you know in in these countries in Middle East countries it's not the same as in Kenya at a place a distance that you should have uh, paid maybe 10 real with a train you will pay 50 real with a taxi and you know 50 real is expensive it's a lot of money it's almost 14 uh, 1400 Kenyan shillings just for a taxi to go somewhere you have not even paid uh, to come back it's expensive if you have the documents just use the train or use the bus it's a little bit cheaper okay you will end up saving something another thing out of mind out of sight out of mind out of sight out of mind you know you cannot admire something you have not seen you can't admire something you have not seen so you can maybe avoid going to those malls maybe if you go you go just once a month or after two months then you visit those malls with a reason that i want to go to the mall and buy this and this but when you are doing window shopping my friend you will meet stuff there that are looking very nice to the eye okay and you will just want to have them you will want to buy them and you will go and buy them by the way because it's your money you know it's not bad to buy them but go with your budget go with your budget have that financial uh, saving discipline like maybe you can allocate uh, you can schedule your money and say that every month I'm gonna save uh, let's say maybe your salary is uh, 50,000 Kenyan shillings you can say that uh, I'm gonna save 30,000 and then spend 20,000 so that when you get your salary the first thing you should do is take that 30,000 and put it somewhere you cannot access then remain with that 20,000 extra that you maybe you have allocated for school fees, your family back in Kenya, and maybe some little money to spend here. Because if you have that money, you have not uh, saved it, you have not locked it, and you see something uh, admirable, pleasing to the eye, you will buy it, my friend. You will buy it. If you visit no smalls, you will be tempted. You will want to buy those stuff there. And nothing will prevent you because it's your money. Nobody is telling you not to buy it. And if you can access that money, what will prevent you from buying that stuff you like? You will buy it. And at the end of the day, you will find that you have finished your two years here or your, two, your three years here. And 
you have nothing to show for it. Yes, you have not done any development. You only bought uh, maybe fancy things that are not even valuable. I'm not saying it's bad to buy fancy things, it's okay. But that is not the purpose that uh, made you come in the Middle East. No, that is not the purpose. We are here for a short period of time and we are here to make a change. So you should have that financial discipline. Without that financial discipline, you, you will end up saving nothing. You will end up changing nothing at all. You will go back to your country the same way you left. Okay? Another thing, uh, there is this trend of friends. There is this trend of friends uh, who at the end of the month they will come huh? please give me a loan now you are uh, you are the loaner huh you are the loaner you want to loan everybody everybody that comes with the please can you give me a loan of ten thousand you give it away please can you give me a loan of twenty thousand you give it away my friend i'm telling you from experience i learned this the hardest way I learned this the hardest way. Nobody told me this. And those friends that are very close, they are the ones that will come for a loan and they will not pay you back. They won't pay you back. I'm telling you this for free. I have uh, a lot of, I've made a lot of loss, losses from the, those uh, people that they are owing me. Some, somebody will come here crying. I'm not saying that you should not help people. Help uh, within your budget. Don't go to your savings to withdraw money from your savings to give somebody a loan they will not pay you back that money and you will end up crying i'm telling you the truth through experience another thing there is this thing of emergencies do you know when you have money that you can access the number of emergencies they rise okay they rise Every now and then there is an emergency. They need this and this. You have to help. You know, when you have a helping heart and you can access that money, you just pick it and transfer it. You end, at the end of the day, you realize that your one month salary, you have, you have spent three, three quarter of your salary doing nothing, just lending this one, helping this one with the emergency, sending back home, and you have saved nothing. And when you go back to your, to, to your country, the first people to laugh at you are the people that you are lending money, are the people that were telling you there is an emergency, there is an emergency. There, there are some emergencies that you should ignore. If that someone is not in the hospital, if someone is not in the hospital, if someone is not uh, maybe paying school fees, you should ignore those ones. The, those, those ones like uh, you are added to WhatsApp groups to fund for a wedding. I cannot contribute money for somebody's wedding, by the way. Even if you want to hate me, that's okay. You can't add me in a WhatsApp group to contribute money for a wedding. I can't contribute that one. I can't. My friend, just marry within your budget. Don't add me in your WhatsApp group to contribute money for a wedding. I don't have that money. You. I can only contribute money if someone is sick or maybe someone wants to go to, the, to school for education. Other things, I cannot contribute money. Those are not emergencies. I cannot, I cannot find some, somebody's... Uh, leisure no i can't i can't give you money for alcohol i cannot another thing uh you see i've talked about those people who come and ask you to lend them money avoid those people they will not pay you back your money and you will end up crying don't find those fancy living styles of people people are coming to add you in whatsapp group for, to contribute for weddings please if when when it will be my, my time to get married don't contribute because I, I didn't contribute to yours don't contribute i will go to the dc and marry with five thousand don't come here with your expensive expensive lifestyle you want us to find it no thank you for watching guys have financial discipline don't forget that thing that made you leave your country to come in the middle east okay don't don't you ever forget before you came to the middle east you had uh, that plan like I'm going to earn this uh, amount of money at the end of the month. I'm going to save this one. Please, even if you cannot save exact amount, make sure that it's it's almost uh, that amount that you told yourself you'll be saving. Don't end up spending the whole salary without saving a single coin. No, 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 no. Those people that are back in your country, that they are telling you your problems. You know when you are back in your country, they were leaving, by the way. When you are back in your country, you had, you had not traveled. Those, your family members, your friends, they were leaving and they were not asking you for anything because they knew you didn't have that money. They were not disturbing you with calls and emergencies and all that. But the moment you, you bought that plane and traveled, now everybody 
wants to look at you. This one uh, wants emergency for this. This one wants a loan for this. This one wants... Now you, the, your money is going the east, west, north, south, you know, and you are remaining with nothing because you are giving everybody, no? you know. And those people, maybe even when you are back in your country, they were not even helping you. And the moment you leave this country without anything and go back to your country, you will become a laughing stock. And there are the people that will ask you, you went abroad and came with nothing. They will laugh at you, my dear. So take care of your money. Okay? Thank you for watching and remember to subscribe.